And uh, just as a side note, if anyone has uh, PTFE tubes out there that you're not looking for, uh, send them my way because I'm hoping if I get enough, like I can make like a nice little wig out of it and, you know, maybe stop hearing all those bald jokes that everyone talks about. Welcome back to George Gadgets, everybody. I am George, and I'm sorry I've been gone for so long. I've missed everyone. I know I could give you a ton of excuses. My life has been a little hectic, and I'm sorry that I stopped uploading and kind of just vanished, but I'm back, and I'm gonna try and put some more videos out. So, uh, today, I wanna talk to you about these Miffies that I created. Miffy is a character from the Netherlands, if anyone doesn't know. Really famous with kids. In Japan, it's pretty big too, and my wife is from Japan and she really loves it, so I thought I'll design these. But what I want to talk to you about today is how I design these for multi-material printing and the trials and tribulations that I went through when I was doing it. Hopefully give you some tips for the MU, the multi-material unit that Prusa has designed, their answer to the mosaic palette. Yeah, let's just jump into it. All right, first and foremost, this is Miffy. Little character that kids grow up with, kind of like, uh, I don't know, I want to say Spongebob, maybe like Sesame Street or something. Obviously this drawing looks a lot better than my 3D model, but uh, don't judge me on that. But I wanted to give you guys a general idea of what Miffy was before we jumped into how I went about modeling this. So in order for a multi-material print to be printable, you have to have the different areas that you want, different colors, to be separate geometries. So as you can see here, I've labeled them all but I have the head, body, so on, all separate geometries. I modeled the left foot, I'd put a line down the middle and mirror it, and then I would use combine and cut out that area. So as you can see, the foot kind of goes in, and what this allows for is as it's printing, it'll print the foot white and create like a separate print and then connect it to the main body just because of the like melting plastic and everything. I remember seeing a video saying that, you know, you have to have separate bodies. And I was curious if you could make something kind of artistic like this without using the mesh mix, mesh, nah, can't speak, mesh mixer approach where you highlight the areas that you want to be different and then you basically snag those and create a separate body. I wanted to try and make my own right from the jump. And, and it's completely doable. Obviously, you could probably do it better than this. And if you can, if there's a better way to do this, I would love for you guys to, to show me to maybe make a snip of you guys modeling something. Because if anyone who's good at modeling would look at this timeline, they would probably vomit. Blender is the same kind of idea. I modeled this completely as one whole body, and then I utilized the geometry to kind of cut away and make separate bodies. Um, so the main body is one, and then you know the eyes are another. And as you can see by the orange outline, it kind of extends into the head and allows for that color change there to happen. And so this was the little baby orange one and the medium orange one that you saw. Uh, if you notice, one of them had a band, and I'll talk about that in like the next little segment. I'm pretty proud of this. Uh, let's hide these eyes and mouth. Uh, this is like my little mechanism I made to be able to pop the head on and off. And I, I wanted this because I didn't want to have like something on the bottom that the money had to come out of, like so many piggy banks have. I thought it would be cool if you could just open it up and pour it out really quick. And uh, so this just slides down utilizing these little balls on the inside. So it slides down using these balls and then you can twist it to the right to lock it in place. The spacing and the location of the bodies in the program that you're using to model it, whether it be Blender or Fusion is important. Like you can't model the eyes and then move the eyes away. At least that's what I understand. Because if you do, then the slicer won't know where to place them. When you pull these in, it knows where to place them because of the position that it was in the slicer. So you have to make sure that those are right. And then once it finally gets in here, you can go through using the Prusa slicer, you go through and you select the right extruders that you want the colors to be associated with. So for instance, when I printed this, I had white on one, I had the yellow and orange on two, and then black on three. And the banding that occurred on uh, all of them, really, it just kind of lessened over time, is attributed to this. So this is Prusa's version of the purge block. If I make these tiny, the purge block will be tiny, and then 
I will waste less plastic. But if you're going from black to white, you wanna make sure that you're purging a lot more because those colors are very drastically different and you'll end up getting banding like I did. So for instance, since I was going, tool one was being, when it was being loaded, I should have probably increased this to 240 because originally I had it at just a regular 70 and that's where you saw the, the major band. And then I had it at 200 and on the mini one, it wasn't too bad, but on the big one, I had it at 220 and there was still slight banding. All right, so I showed you guys how I designed this in Fusion and in Blender for this little guy. And I just wanted to go over some of the things that I ran into while I was trying to print. Before I do that, let's look at Miffy and how it works because I'm pretty proud of it. So this is a piggy bank. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of this, but you save money, uh, you put money in here, and eventually you save enough money to where you're rich and you don't have to work anymore. So I'm still working that part out. But how you do this is it twists to the left and then you can pull it up. And then the grooves I showed you and the balls and like how I designed it before, they all kind of slide into these channels and it locks in place. And then you got your coins in there. I'm in Europe now and you have so much Euro change when you're in Europe, it's ridiculous. So that's part another part of the reason why I designed this. But then the balls just go back in the channels, you turn to the right and now it's like locked in place. Wouldn't that have been hilarious if it just crashed and fell everywhere? There's a little slot for it. So I'm pretty, pretty darn proud of this. This is one of the first projects that I've ever made on my own. Uh, this is the banding I was talking about with the purge volumes. So you can see the, the black line by the eyes and the mouth. And, and the black line is because the purge volumes weren't correct. It didn't load enough white after it had been printing black. And that's why there's still leftover pigment from the black filament. Another thing I want to talk about, the purge blocks on this, I understand that if you mess with the purge volumes and you increase the amount that it purges, the blocks will be larger. But I feel like this was significantly less than the mosaic palette when I was printing with that. I don't know if they've made updates. I really haven't messed with that. I, I probably should. But the Moo, to me, has a much better purge system than the mosaic palette did when I was using it. I haven't tested the palette too, so I can't speak on that. But to me, the Moo is an excellent solution if you own a Mark III. And everything's all in one, it's all connected in the same slicer, and it all works great after you've done some tweaking. Another thing is, I think, a guaranteed must if you're going to print with this are the auto rewind spools. I printed mine in PLA, and a lot of people recommended in the comments to print it in PETG. And being, you know, traditional George fashion, I was like, I'm not going to listen to anyone. And uh, I regretted that because I'm going to have to print them all out in PETG because mine, a couple of mine ended up breaking. So this is a little spring made out of PLA and it causes tension as it unspools, the weight of the spool kind of makes the spool rotate and then it'll uns unspin as it's unwinding. So it keeps everything nice and tidy and it just reduces another variable of error for your prints. I printed the first couple with iFun iFun, I'm going to say now, is a really crappy filament for me. I don't know if it was the temperature I was printing at, but for whatever reason, I had terrible stringing. It's not good for multi-material printing. Uh, these strings were like hair thin, and the Moo would still pick up that something was in there, and I'd have to undo the little nut that leads down from the Moo unit to the extruder and get these tiny tweezers just to reach in there and pull out this tiny, thin strand of filament. And it had to do it every time it switched over from white. This one. This one was supposed to take, I think, like six or seven hours or something. It ended up taking like multiple days because of all this, the mess ups and me having to constantly pull those strings out. So iFun's not a good filament. So what I'm trying to say with that is make sure you use new filament, make sure you get quality filament. I use Hatchbox for the big one and this little guy and I didn't run into any more issues. Another thing that I did with these is I switched out for Capricorn PTFE tubes. The PTFE tubes that come with Prusa's kit. Maybe they're good, maybe I just got a bad batch, but I feel like there's much too resistance uh, within these and I constantly had problems. It wouldn't feed correctly and I don't know, I was just running into a bunch of different issues. But I switched out for the Capricorn PTFE tubes and it feels like there's a lot less resistance. I remember reading reviews and saying how great it was and to me it didn't seem like that big of an upgrade and I'm not sponsored by any of the things that I'm talking about here, uh, it's just all my experience. I dropped 50 bones to get basically 5 meters worth of Capricorn tubing and I think that that's 
probably the single best upgrade for this unit because you don't have to worry about your filament getting any resistance from those tubes. Another thing is, is the mods, mods, and more mods. M10 PTFE holder, it allows for a pass-through of a tube, and with that you can easily remove the tube if you need to do any troubleshooting, and you will have to do troubleshooting. And this guy. It's just a simple little clamp, and you can feed your tubes through, and it just organizes them a little better. I really like this. I think that it was a great upgrade. It's amazing that the community is out there constantly making these products so much better than when they were initially released. Uh, part of the reason why I like 3D printing is because we're all about helping each other out. But I had a lot of fun making this. I've had to refilm four times because of all the mess ups that I've done because I'm so out of practice. And if you're still watching, if you still subscribed, I appreciate it. I'm sorry that I, you know, fell off the face of the earth for a while, but I'm back and I'm going to try to make more videos. And uh, I love you guys. Thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Hopefully it's not a year. Hopefully. I don't know. We'll see.